Associate Professor Fatih Court is going to talk about the benefits uh, offered to candidate pilgrims by the uh, training program for Hajj travelers. Uh, Mr. Fatih Court, you have 15 minutes. The floor is yours. Esteemed Chair, distinguished and valuable professors with whom I'm honored to share this session as a speaker. Those who are following us now, either online or physically in this hall, I'd like to extend my best regards to each and every one of you. Welcome to the symposium and specifically to this session. I hope it will be fruitful with the help of God. This is an international symposium. Bearing this in mind, and knowing that we are being watched by many people from around the world, and knowing that different aspects of Hajj and Ubra are being discussed, I would like to share some of our experience and practices with you. And I know that this is a process of mutual negotiation and discussion. Maybe it is also a chance to improve ourselves. It's important that we offer uh, some proposals and recommendations for improvement. So for many years, uh, we have been following certain uh, practices and also we have been measuring and monitoring the effects and impacts of our practices. This, uh, uh, the, one of these practices is uh, our training program for Hajj travelers. I would like to provide you some information about its contents, its uh, integral whole, and then in the conclusion part, I would like to underline a few particulars, and I will try to give you some new recommendations. In fact, when the proceedings are published later on, you will have the chance to refer to my paper, which will include more details compared to now. I would like to make use of time efficiently today, so I will be trying to be brief and concise. So I will provide you with a, a brief the summary of my paper. But before I start, I would like to thank all those who have been working in the Hajj organization field for many years. Uh, in fact, as you heard, I used to work uh, as uh, uh, head of department uh, and Hikmet Karaman, Fikret Karaman, whom you are going to listen to later, uh, is also here with me. And there are many others uh, who are here, who are alive today, and who unfortunately passed away. I would like to thank all of them and remember all of them uh, for their efforts. And uh, I would like to extend my thanks to the currently available staff of the distinguished participants. Our presidency implements a, a Hajj training program for uh, the uh, prospective uh, pilgrims, and there are four phases of it. Uh, w the first one is related to the part that is implemented in Turkey before the travel starts. Uh, the second is, in, um, is related to Mecca. The third is about Medina, and the fourth is uh, about the post-travel uh, uh, steps. So in total, there are four phases of this training. So this is a guidance program. Mainly, of course, the uh, major uh, purpose is to uh, help the uh, prospective pilgrims to perform their ibadah with the necessary awareness and consciousness. The first phase, as I said before, is implemented in Turkey. Uh, so we uh, have provincial and sub-provincial MIFTA offices. Uh, those officers and also the Hajj officers uh, are following and implementing this first phase. The purpose of the first phase is uh, to prepare the uh, pilgrim candidates uh, for the uh, ibadah, for the travel, to refresh their awareness. The uh, is uh, uh, the part of the verse, you know. So. Uh, it's about feeding them with the necessary 
information and knowledge before they start their journey. Uh, so uh, the first phase, which is implemented in Turkey, includes the following topics very quickly. About the awareness and the Hajj Ibadah specifically, uh, we emphasize that Hajj is an Ibadah, uh, that is why we raise the awareness. The second topic is uh, material and immaterial uh, preparations before starting the journey. Uh, so this is an ibadah, and this is also a journey, a travel. Uh, maybe many uh, pilgrim candidates uh, are having uh, such a big travel uh, for the first time in their life. It means that they need to get prepared uh, very carefully and strongly, both materially and immaterially. They need to prepare their hearts, their minds, their spirits, and uh, they need to uh, uh, get settled with those who are left behind before they start the travel. So that is why we emphasize the immaterial preparations, the spiritual preparations. I have two experiences to share with you in this regard. The first example I caught. I had a brother-in-law. I have uh, I haven't been talking to him for many years, uh, but uh, just because uh, I was going on Hajj, I called him and now we are good. The second quotation. The daughter of my uh, auntie, I was offended by her, but you know, since I was going on Hajj, I just visited her and now we're good. You see, these are the results of the uh, recommendations that are given uh, to the uh, pilgrims before they start. This is the output that we got. Another topic is related to living together uh, because the pilgrims will be spending some time together. They need to have some awareness about how to exist together, at least for a certain period of time. For example, they will have a collective accommodation. They will meet uh, some other pilgrims coming from different countries. They need to be prepared about this. So under this topic, we give this awareness about living together. Another topic is related to uh, specific topics, uh, for example, specific health issues, uh, especially those related to women and children. Forty-seven uh, percent uh, of the uh, pilgrims in the last tour were women. So uh, you see uh, that is a, a superior level of practice. Maybe for the first time they are going to give the Friday prayer or the uh, funeral prayer. Uh, and compared to male uh, pilgrims, uh, you know, they will have some different practices, thinking about the ihram, tarbiyah, etc. That is why the pil uh, pr uh, pilgrim candidates, uh, the female ones, are also informed and uh, we help them with their preparations. Before the pilgrim candidates leave Turkey, uh, we also uh, train them about Mekke, Medine, Münevere, and also the uh, Umrah itself as the first step, the uh, intentions to be uttered. In addition, before the uh, journey, the travel starts within the country, basic health information is provided to the candidate pilgrims and the experts provide this uh, information. This is not only limited to the pandemic, that has been the uh, part of Turkish experience for many years. This training takes 15 hours and we give this training very carefully and uh, at the very end of my presentation I'm going to provide you information about the participation numbers. The second phase is the training that is given in Mekke Mükerreme. And this, uh, maybe I can inform our foreign guests now. In fact, you heard some uh, information uh, from the DJ yesterday. But anyway, uh, in fact, the Republic of Turkey appoints one religious uh, officer for 40 people. It means that, the, the, uh, and also there is a uh, there is one chief uh, f for five uh, groups and uh, in a caravan, and also there is always one lady officer uh, in a caravan. And uh, our uh, prominent 
scientists, scholars, and important experts from the presidency are also included in the guidance team in addition, and they are involved in the uh, training and education activities. They also provide keep providing uh, the training throughout the journey. What are the topics of the uh, next phase? The first one is TEVHID. Uh, you know, Tevit, I believe, is always at the top of the list uh, because Hajj is an ibadah that is performed upon invitation of uh, Prophet Abraham. And uh, Tevit symbolizes uh, Prophet Abraham. And Hajj brings you together with Prophet Abraham. That is why Tevit. Abraham, and Kaaba are the main pillars of this part of the training. Uh, Prophet's life, uh, Muhammad's life in Mecca is another part of the training because uh, this ibadah takes us to the uh, century of bliss. It prepares us uh, for uh, this new experience and pre-nubavet uh, and nubavet The challenges uh, and incidents are explained. Shibi Ebi Talib, the problems encountered by the companions of the Prophet, they're all explained in this phase. During the uh, Hajj journey, you know, uh, the uh, Wahi and its importance is also explained, and the importance of Quran is also explained to the uh, pilgrims uh, because that uh, inspiration, that Wahi, in fact, uh, is directly related to the location of uh, Hajj and the uh, duties and responsibilities that are written in the Quran are uh, reminded again and again. Uh, so we need to explain that they uh, need to be individuals who live uh, the Quran itself. So we also underline the inspiration and revelation. Another part of the training is related to the prayers. You know, prayers are uttered very frequently during Hajj. Uh, so uh, the, the importance of prayer, purification, and repentance is frequently reminded to the uh, travelers. Nafila ibadah and their importance are also uh, uh, explained. Maybe for the first time, a pilgrim is going to wake up at night and uh, perform some ibadah, and they are going to put more prosperity in their daytime with some nafile uh, prayers and ibadahs. And that is why we highlight once again the importance and necessity of this nafile ibadah. Uh, they, they need to make this a part of their life, uh, at least for a certain time. Uh, so our guidance teams and uh, the religious offices uh, give us necessary guidance, uh, faith, acts, and morality are uh, three important pillars of uh, Islam, and these are also covered in the training. So a believer uh, uh, should be careful with the acts, uh, should act according to the faith, and Hajj uh, is refreshing the morality. We remind all of these issues in the training. And the Islamic Brotherhood is a topic that we keep emphasizing in the training because the pilgrims will come together and embrace their brothers and sisters from different nations. And in the opening session, our guests from Afghanistan, in fact, mentioned, you can remember that unfortunately Muslims are killing one another in this age. Unfortunately, this is happening. So the Islamic nation concept and also the Islamic Brotherhood concept are reminded to the Hajjis. That's an important mission for is the uh, balance between the, this world and the other world is also underlined so about uh, with that uh, we also uh, give warnings and uh, any malpractices of the or the wrong things of the pilgrims should be prevented we also give them some warnings for this uh, and the phase related to Medina Imunevere now its importance is explained 
the examples set by the Prophet for the humanity are explained. And Sar and Muhajir brotherhood is reminded. And the experience of our Prophet uh, about living together with different people uh, is reminded. Medina uh, consensus and the importance of social convention uh, are also covered. And the places to be visited in uh, Medina are also explained in this phase. Very quickly, I would like to give you a list of the remaining topics and then I will give you some conclusions. So I need just two or three minutes more to finish. So regarding Hajj organization, and also specifically in the uh, guidance and training services that are provided by the DJ for Hajj and Umrah, in fact, are uh, successfully implemented because we have a, a subunit under this DG dealing with these uh, services, uh, especially regarding the guidance and training activities. Those who are performing the Hajj Ibadah, in fact, are changing their lives. And that change is coming from the effect uh, that is created uh, by the Hajj, and they said that after their uh, Hajj training and after their Hajj travel, uh, they increase their uh, religious practices. They learn more about the Quran, and they quit their bad habits. At least they show uh, uh, some efforts for this. They try to live the life in a better way. We know this because they say, and they give these comments afterwards. So, uh, both the practitioners and also the program developers uh, should take into consideration the following recommendations. This is my short contribution to you. So, Hajj Ibadah is an Ibadah. It should be practiced just uh, for the consent of God, and that should be mentioned more frequently to the attention of our uh, pilgrim candidates. The second recommendation is related to the morality issues. So in the daily lives of uh, believers uh, today, there are many problems about, severe problems about social life and also faith, and we need to uh, make stronger emphasis on this. Uh, of course, about Bidat uh, and other uh, things, we give some reminders about Bidat and and Hurafas, uh, we see an increase about this. Uh, for example, they try to bring some camel tongue from Kabe. They, they try to bring some sand or soil or dust. They try to take a piece of the uh, cloth of Kabe. We cannot prevent these uh, practices. So we need to emphasize this more. According to figures from our DG, 59.8% of potential uh, pilgrims attend our training activities. This ratio, 59.8%, uh, can be increased uh, by making this pre-Hajj training obligatory. 70% of our uh, pilgrim candidates are primary school graduates or they are illiterate. They cannot read and write. That is why rather than written text, uh, we can use some audio materials, visual materials. We can collaborate uh, for a better training service to be provided to them. With my best regards, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Mr. Fatih Kurt.